Hello, Makati. Hello, world. This is Attorney Angel, and I'm your legal angel. This is Basic Legal Ethics Lecture 2. I hope you learned something from this. Now, let's talk about Mandatory Continuing Legal Education, MCLE for short. And by the way, thank you very much to the group of my former students in Basic Legal Ethics. Uh, uh, I ask the permission from the group of Miss Michelle Asuncion if I can use their infographics for purposes of this vlog. And they said yes. Um, here are the FAQs or most frequently asked questions regarding the MCLE. So what is MCLE? And as I said, it is the Mandatory Continuing Legal Education, a program which is mandated by the Supreme Court requiring members of the Integrated Bar of the Philippines to undergo continuing legal education to ensure that members are um, up to date or to ensure that they keep abreast with the latest um, developments in the law and jurisprudence and of course to maintain ethics of the profession and enhance the standard of the practice of law throughout their legal career or throughout their membership in the legal profession. Now, it is um, also known as Bar Matter 850. And um, a little bit about its history is that um, this was uh, introduced way back in 1997 by the then Chief Justice Hilario Davide. And then fast forward, the Integrated Bar of the Philippines made a study and submitted their proposal, their recommendations to the Philja or the Philippine Judicial Academy until it is uh, it was already um, resolved and um, the Supreme Court released Bar Matter 850, which is now the MCLE. And for the legal basis, um, if you remember in Canon 5 of the Code of Professional Responsibility, uh, it is stated that a lawyer shall keep abreast of legal developments, participate in continuing legal education programs, etc., etc., and so forth and so on. So it is rooted in the canons of the Code, profession, or Code of Professional Responsibility and also under the Rules of Court in Rule 139-A, Section 2, which states that the fundamental purposes of the integrated bar shall be to elevate the standards of the legal profession, improve the administration of justice, and enable the bar to discharge its public responsibility more effectively. So the MCLE was born. Bar Matter 850. All right. So are there exemptions? Uh, actually, as a general rule, all lawyers must take the MCLE. That is why it is mandatory. But are there exceptions? Of course, there are exceptions. Um, under the Bar Matter 850, there are exceptions such as the President, the Vice President, Secretaries, Undersecretaries of the different executive departments, the Senators and members of the House of Representatives, the Chief Justice and the Associate Justices of the Supreme Court and other, others on the list as mentioned in Section 1 and 2 of Rule 7 of Bar Matter 850. Okay. Oops. Okay. Let's make it bigger. So, what are the requirements for completion? So, as you can see here, the, the completion or the compliance is every three years. Uh, we are now on the seventh compliance, and I have completed my seventh compliance. Okay, <laughs> and um, thirty-six hours or thirty-six units, so equivalent of one hour, one unit is one hour of continuing legal education activities approved by the governing body of the MCLE, which is the MCLE committee. So six units out of the thirty-six units, the, the these are broken down as follows. Six hours, legal ethics, four hours, trial and pretrial skills, five units or five hours to alternative dispute resolution, nine hours, um, updates on substantive and procedural laws and jurisprudence, 
four units or four hours to legal writing and oral advocacy and two units or two hours to international law and conventions. And then the remaining six hours are devoted to subjects prescribed by the MCLE committee. And this is uh, under section 2, rule 2 of uh, Bar Matter 850. And as you can see, um, heavy weight is now accorded to legal ethics. It is six units, okay? so that the lawyers will be reminded of um, their duty to be always of good moral character and avoid um, negligence, incompetence, immorality, and um, not to be involved in crimes involve, involve, involving moral turpitude and staying true always to the canons of the Code of Professional Responsibility, the lawyer's oath, and the duties of the attorneys under the rules of court. Okay. What if you fail to comply? Are there consequences? Of course, there are. So what if a member fails to comply? Uh, if you com if you fail to comply at the end of if a, if a lawyer fails to comply at the end of the compliance period, he or she shall pay a non-compliance fee of one thousand pesos and shall be given sixty days to comply with the requirements. And if he or she still fails to comply after the said period for compliance, he or she shall be listed as a delinquent member of the IBP upon the recommendation of the MCLE committee. We don't want that to happen his or her membership membership fees shall continue to accrue during the period that he or she is listed as a delinquent members so that is under rule 13 of bar matter 850. so please 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 when you become lawyers comply with the mcle otherwise you know the consequences that will happen. And uh, I mentioned about the governing body of the MCLE, which is the MCLE committee. And the MCLE committee is composed of five members as follows. A retired justice of the Supreme Court acting as the chair, four members respectively nominated by the IBP, the FILJA, a law center designated by the SE and Association of Law Schools and or law professors. And the committee shall administer and adopt the implementing rules as may be necessary subject to the approval of the Supreme Court. And that is found under Rule 15 of Bar Matter 50. Thank you and I hope you learned something from this Thank you very much for watching and for listening. Be kind, be a blessing to others, and always remember to glorify God with a grateful heart. This is Attorney Angel and I'm your legal angel. Sarangay!